What's up guys? Welcome back. This is part number four of my F16 build, a 30 second scale Tamiya kit. Now in this video we're going to talk about the pylons, the weapons and the pods. And there's quite a lot to it. So we're going to talk about the assembly, the painting and the weathering and all the decals, basically everything involved and there's a lot of work. Um, for me to get this, this part of the video actually building time is about 20 hours of manpower. So it's quite a lot, quite extensive, um, quite a lot of weapons you get in the set and fuel tanks and stuff. So we'll go through it all. But like I say, it'll be a little bit longer video than usual, but please stick with it and um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this week we are working on the weapons. So. As I mentioned in the previous parts, the great thing about this kit is it's basically modular and a lot of subcomponents. So each color area is almost a separate model, and at the very end we kind of bring it all together. So you can really do any any section, any kind of order you want. So we're doing weapons this week. You could do this as the very beginning, you do it at the very end. You can do the engine first. You can do the engine end. You can do the cockpit. Get and on and on. So whatever episode you're watching here, whatever part I'm doing, you can do it in any order at all. Um, within reason obviously. Um, obviously the cockpit needs to go inside the fuselage and you go from there but everything else is pretty much a subcomponent. We're going to treat this as a separate model where we're going to you know, paint it, we're going to decal it, we're going to weather it and then all separately and at the end we bring it together. So weapons. So what we'll do is we'll talk about the actual um, fuel tanks and the armament um, first and then we'll talk about the, um, the cannon afterwards and this is all going to be part of the same episode. So the nice thing about this kit is well typical to me is you get a ton of weapons and pretty much everything you need especially for the scheme i'm working on so here's the loadout diagram you got all kinds of things you got am 120b c's um harm missiles which is the agm 88s you got the center line fuel tank you've got um aim 9ms you got gbu 31s jdams you got a um ecm pod and you got a couple of other fuel tanks for the wings so from there, you kind of need to figure out what you want to do for your jet. Um, the great thing is, as you know, I'm using these decals by Afterburner. And it actually comes as a really good guide and modeling notes, which you don't normally get with decals. It actually gives them a loadout, which I need. So this particular scheme we're doing, if I kind of go back to this page, just a reminder, is we're going to do this one here, which is Insulic, which is up resonate north or what or, or northern watch depending if you're american or british i guess it's called different operations um so this is a scheme in select active duty in 499 um and then the other ones they have a luke sorry short shore air force base so the thing to note first thing is depending on which model you do it's nice because i didn't realize this until i was looking for decals but you get the replace you get the the bird slicer part for the front. This goes in front of the canopy, like the panel at the very front. You have a flat one which I installed, and you have this, this kind of um, bird slicer on this raised detail. And actually, my notes here it tells me um, even which one to go with. So if you're doing short air force base, you have that part just showed you the um, the bird slicer. And fortunately, the one I installed, the, the plane kind of, when I say plane kind of, there's no bird, you know, it's just smooth service. It's up, up Northern Watch 99. So Fortunately, I went ahead and inadvertently I installed the right piece. Uh, actually, what instructions tells you for. But it's nice to get the op those, those kind of um, the op options and stuff in the kit. So here, this is the one we're looking at. We don't care about shore air force base. We're looking in slick, obviously, in Northern Watch. It tells me what I need. So um, yeah, I've got all the stuff in the kit. The only difference is uh, it says for a short um, pod. I got a long version of pod, but hey, I'm not a rivet counter. It is what it is. I'm no problem with that for me. Um, everything else, I have this configuration. So we're going with harm missiles. If you read the kind of spiel up here, it explains that you know, these 16s did carry harm missiles. So even though it gives you the option of the CBU 87s, which aren't actually in this kit, um, they did carry mostly harm missiles. So I took basically the loadout of my decals of what it, you know, the real life thing and compared it to the instructions. Oh, banging around. So here are my instructions, and you can see I basically circled what I'm going for. So I've got pretty much everything up in the pod. Like I said, I've got long version of the pod, and I think it's a short one um, in real life, but it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Um, so we're going to go with two fuel tank on each on each wing. Center is going to be the the pod. 
then we're going to do on the the pylon pylons moving away from the from the fuel tanks we're going to do the harm missiles one on each side then we do a couple of um, uh, AIMs I don't think it makes much difference but I'm doing a 120 B's so two on that wing and just to kind of switch it up a little bit I'm going to put um, an AIM 9M on that one and a um, 120B on that so three 120Bs um, just a different missile on that one put like I say per my um, my loadout here you know it did say on that pylon it did carry sometimes the um, AIM 9M missile which we're going to go with just a little bit of um, you know kind of um, visual appeal you know switch it up in different colors and types and stuff just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at so that's a real world loadout and um, fortunately what I need is in the kit so um, yeah so I basically circled what I need so um, fuel tanks pretty straightforward just a couple of parts at the um, the back and the front and um, glued on the the pylon when you pylons two parts when you do it you gotta make sure you have the pins because as you're, if you remember, we actually put the poly caps in the wing. So what happens is they can, you can clip them in and out, and they, they're really nice fit. You have to glue them on, which is really nice. So actually, you can change this loadout at any time, to be honest with you. Um, it's all poly caps and pins. So the fuel tanks are done. Um, took care of the seams. Hopefully, I got obviously put some, put some um, a little bit of primer on, make sure it's gone. If not, we might need a little bit of work because obviously these things are huge. I think 30 second scale. Um, but yeah, these will obviously get painted up. Um, whatever color they are, I believe it's probably light ghost gray, and then we'll wear it or decal them and wear it all up and stuff separately, um, kind of beat them up a little bit, because fuel tanks are, you know, if you've seen real life, these are kind of beaten up, they're not, you know, always kept in like pristine condition. Um, so here's the two fuel pack tanks for each, each of the wing, and um, what I'll do now is I'll move on and um, I'll start cutting the pieces out and working on the rest of the ordnance. So it looks like we've got two harm missiles, three AIM 120Bs, and a, and a um, AIM 9M one of those so four missiles and um well, well six i guess and a pod so i'll get working cut all those out i'm not sure if i I'll, as i go along if I, there's anything I, I spot or anything to call out i'll show you on camera but pretty much i think it's just really just following the instructions it's pretty straightforward um let's scroll back a couple of pages you'll see For example this is the iams um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? So, I mean, I'll go ahead and start building these. Um, like I say, if anything to call out, I'll let you guys know. And then we'll come back in a couple of minutes once I've got them all kind of assembled and glued together. And we'll go from there. Okay, so we're cracking on here, as you can see. Um, no problems at all. Built the AIM 120Bs. Three, one, three of them right here, as we spoke about. A couple of the pods, center pod, and then a chin pod. It's a harm pod, I believe. Um, really nice detail. I've just thrown these together and glued them. I still got to work on the seams and tidy it up and stuff. Um, but yeah, looking good. The sidewinder and the harm missile. I still have one more harm missile to do. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I did initially glue on the pylon, but then I realised with the harms, these are actually white, and um, obviously this is going to be the light goes gray so it's easier to paint separately and attach it um, one thing to note with this is too let me get to focus it Oop. camera flashing up one thing to note um, with this guy too is when you do attach it this point right here just make sure you really kind of push it in um, and it's flush so this pylon's flush with, with the missile when I first did it um, the missile was kind of on some jointy angle like facing upwards so it should be parallel with the pylon um, but again, this is going to be like the aircraft and the side color, and this is going to be white. So just paint that separately; be easier. Um, all these other missiles will be white. I believe. No, sorry, like these all light ghost gray, um, and this is the only one that's white. Um, hence why the pylon's off. Now, I did have a problem with the harm missile, and that's because it's, it mentioned it was Sprue W. So I looked through my pack over and over, and like lo and behold, I couldn't find Sprue W. I was like, what's going on here? And then finally I realized, which is quite common in this kit, you have a couple different sprues kind of molded into one. So although this is, if you see there, sprue V, actually, lo and behold, W is actually this little insert, which is part of the V sprue. Um, so the harm missile is right here. Um, so just, yeah, just bear in mind that one. So the harm missile here, the W is in, in amongst the, the V sprue. So a few sprues like that in this kit, you've got like kind of a couple molded into each other. So something that's going to be a little tricky to find, but, but yeah, there it is. So W again is in the V sprue. Kind of if that makes sense, um, but yeah, let me go ahead and make that other second harm missile. Um, cl clean all this stuff up, and then um, 
we'll start, well, I guess we'll move on from there. Right, so about two or three days has passed and see so making some progress with these weapons. The last you saw, we're cleaning them up. Now we actually got them primed, actually a couple painted too. So, well, can't kind of painted. We'll talk about them in a minute. So, took a while. Um, so, primed everything. Well, here's what I did. So I primed all the pylons and the fuel tanks in black. And then I checked the seams, took care of any seams. And then after, once I was happy with that, um, it's fully black. I went ahead and, with the white, like I do with my shadow coats, created like this base color, um, so it gives some texture for weathering underneath. My, my weapons aren't going to be weathered. Um, typically, missiles and stuff aren't. They're going to be pretty much a pure color. So I did that for the uh, pylons and the um, fuel tanks only. So you see, I ended with this. Um, had, eh, took a while to get seam lines out. The reason it took two or three days is one of those things where you, you know, prime it, see a few imperfections, which is the whole point of primer. Um, took care of it and primed it again, then noticed again a few more little spots. Had to take care of it. So about four times on these guys it took. And finally, I think we're pretty much seamless. Um, especially now the shadow coat's on, it's going to break up any little imperfections and stuff. So what I do is get them seamless. So the usual combination of stuff, to be honest with you. We use the old sanding sponge. This one happens to be Florid Models. But, you know, UMP Retail, they do them, do them too. There's several different flavors. But sanding sponge, it's good for, obviously, because we're going around curved surfaces and stuff. So it kind of goes with the contour. One of my favorites at the moment is the scraper. This is the Master Tools one and not very expensive about 10 bucks so you're just scraping the seams off same as what you used to do with the old school with like a scalpel blade or a knife just scrape off the um the seam um i just know hit this one it looks like there's a seam but there's oh, not on camera shot it looks like there's a seam line but it's not just where i dropped it when the paint was wet but it's going to cover up paint no problem um so yeah go back to scalpel um zuki mora if you're into into your um scraper sorry Suzuki Mora do one for about 40 bucks. I think it's actually 42 dollars and it's made from like in Japan from like Samurai sword material and things fantastic and you're supposed to sharpen it with a special block and that kind of stuff So if you are looking for a scraper say these are good for you know for a beginner everyday use But Suzuki Mora do if you'd like your tools check out the Suzuki Mora one for sure I, I'm tempted to buy it, but you know 42 dollars a lot of money for a scraper um, And then finally the old my, my favorite putty of choice still the right now the Vallejo Plastic putty. It's kind of like perfect plastic putty, but for me, perfect plastic putty is a lot more expensive and it's a bigger tube and it dries up and actually get better results. You know, I know people like different things, but for me, I, I've used it for years and this tube's actually getting low now. But, um, but yeah, this old white putty and it's it, I like it because it's water soluble. Um, so what, what it means is when you put on your seams, uh, leave it five minutes and then I come with a Q tip dipped in water and you can rub off a lot of the excess without having to sand it, um, which, which is nice. Um, so yeah, so really a combination of these three to, to get the seams. Like I say, it's just a trial and error to keep going at it. Um, it's not, it's probably my least favorite part of model building seams, to be honest with you, especially fuel tanks. Um, I really hate it to be honest with you, but, but anyway, yeah, the thing did a good job, got rid of those seams. Um, yeah, so did the fuel tanks on here, did obviously the pylons. Um, what I did with, same deal with these missiles. What I did was, um, again, primed it, but instead of priming in black, because these are going to be like a lighter grey, I'm, I'm priming them in XF19, um, your ten year. Oh, stuck to the desk, there it is. Um, XF19 for priming these guys, so, um, yep, prime them all up, same same processes with the fuel tanks, um, had a couple of seams that go back over, you know, could take care of, and pre-prime and re-prime, finally got to where I want to, so I did that um, on the parts in the XF19, also did the harm missiles in XF19, and... I went ahead and that's dried. I went ahead and started painting. So for the white, I'm using Mr. Surfs of 1500 white. I've heard good things about this, so I'm really just kind of getting into it now. The white version instead of using paint. They say it's, people are telling me it's a really good um, product to use. So I get it one coat already with white. The key is don't flood it. You know, just do little small coats. Um, so like I said, done one coat last night. It needs another coat today, and hopefully it should be good to go. Um, don't really want to weather up these missiles too much. Um, because they're not, not, missiles aren't normally weathered anyway. But in terms of panel, I might do give, kind of give it a panel line wash. Um, we'll see. I've, in the past, with smaller scales, I've done panel line washes and it looked kind of terrible. So I was inclined to do nothing. But seeing all this lovely detail on here, I think it needs something at least. So maybe I'll come around and just do a slight panel line wash. But we shall see. So 
that's pretty much where we're up to. Um, all these, there's a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, there's more weapons in the kit. I've just built the ones you're actually going to use. So, you know, if you want to build them all, there's a lot more. So, it's a lot of work. Um, I kind of like doing it early on the build just because if I build the aircraft and get it all done, then work on, work on doing this stuff, it's really a chore for me. It's it's not exciting or, you know, it's really hard to get it done. The mojo goes and it's just, a, yeah, just like I say, a chore to, get, to work through it. But doing it early on the build really helps, I think. Um, so plenty more to do, we've got to get all the rest of this painted up, um, a lot of detail paint on the pod, and then we've got to um, add all decals. Talking of which, I look through these instructions um, tons of times, and then I look through my color call out sheets and a box. I couldn't find, I knew there's decals on here, but I couldn't find anything showing where the decals go. There's nothing in the instructions, and lo and behold, like the very sec well, second page, it's right there, so you got the, the book. And then for some reason, second page, it gives you the, um, the, the decals for the weapons. So, yeah. So if you'd like me, you're trying to find it. Again, um, yeah, look at the front of the book. They put them there for some reason. I don't know. To be honest, I've not even looked. I'm not sure if it even gives you a reference. It tells you in the, in the actual instructions where to go or not. But any road, that's where they are. So, looking good. So let me go ahead and paint the pylons up, um, the rest of the weapons. And um, we'll come back and we'll go from there. Hey, welcome back. So a lot of the painting is done. As you can see in front of you, these fuel tanks are done. As you can see, the appreciating showing through. That's the whole point I do that. You can see it gives that a really nice kind of weathered look already. A good start to the weathering process. Obviously a lot more work. We're going to go here with um, some, you know, some weathering washes and some neat oils and stuff to really kind of weather these things up. About two years ago, I went to an air show in Virginia Beach. I think it's NAS Oceana, I think that's what it is. And that's where the home of the Hall of Hornets are. And they had literally had dozens, if not hundreds, hundreds of these guys just stacked up at the side of the, um, the flight line. And some of these are really kind of beaten up. And, and so you really go to town weathering these, these fuel tanks. They're certainly not kept in kind of mint condition. So that's that, guys. Down. Ooh, dropping them all again. Harm missiles. So as I mentioned, I painted them with the Mr. Surfacer White. Now, it didn't really give me the finish I looked liked. It was a little matte, not quite pop so much. So what I did was, I came back with some, it's what I used my pre-shading, the Game Air Dead White 72701. Perfect pure white. I just gave it a quick spray over. Um, that's obviously an acrylic paint. And pretty thin, don't need to do anything with it. And you can see that it just gives me a nice pop and sheen I want without having even do a kind of gloss coat or a, or a satin coat over it. So that's looking really good. Obviously I'll touch up a few pieces, obviously where the clip's holding onto it and that kind of stuff. Um, Oh, sounds like a fire truck going by. You hear sorry in the background. So, the AA missiles. So, that was a little, actually, happy little mistake because I wanted a little total difference. When we build an aircraft, I like weathering. I like a lot of different shades and tonal differences. I find if you just paint the same thing, same color, like a block, it kind of looks like a toy. It doesn't look quite so realistic. So, what I did is I went to grab my guns paint, um, this type of paint, in like gross gray because I thought it might be slightly a shade off or maybe slightly different. But I inadvertently grabbed number 338 instead of 308. So I actually got 36495 instead of FS36375. So you see it's a very similar number. So it's actually a lighter gray. This paint here is what I used. Let's get the focus for you. There we go. So I used this for the, for the AIM missiles, um, the Sidewinder. And it actually turned out really nice. Um, it, it's a little bit lighter, but these missiles are carried on the racks. Um, they're weathered. They, they they fade in the light. There's all different shades. So I know it's not technically the factory fact fresh color, but for me, I think it's going to work perfectly. Um, went down so smoothly. Again, you can kind of see here the color, and against the the light ghost gray, it doesn't have that bluey tinge. See, so it's against the um, the pylons and stuff. It's really going to pop, which which that's the look I'm looking for. I want you know different colors and shades and stuff. So yeah, so that's good, looking really good. Um, again, Mr. Hobby 338 is what I use for that um, inadvertently. Um, what else? Do, 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 do. Um, so, yeah, so I'm left. I, I've obviously got to paint the. Paint a little bit more. I think these are. The, the air missiles have um, the white nose. So I've got to paint. Touch, touch, touch up some paint there. So I've got white noses paint. I think they have like a steel fins. Same with the sidewinder. It's got a little bit of touch. That detail painting. This pod has a ton of like little detail paint to do with like black lenses and stuff 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do some, do some more detail painting. I'm also gonna add the decals as well. Um, being lacquered is a nice smooth finish, so I don't really need to add any kind of um, clear coat. I'll put a decal straight down onto this and they should work okay. Um, I'm not gonna show you how I do decals. I've done it plenty of times in the past, and plus we'll do an upcoming video in this series about decaling the actual aircraft itself. So you'll see then the process exactly the same. You know, all decals are the same. So that's it. So enough waffling. Let me go ahead and start working on some detail paint on these guys and decals, and we'll come back and then we'll talk about adding some power line wash and weathering. Hey guys, just a quickie. Um, painted these up. I just want to share the colors real quick. So all the fins on the missiles were painted LP61 metallic gray. I do love the Tamiya LP metallics. Um, the front end of the Sidewinder was coarse gunmetal, so I used LP19 gunmetal. Um, looking good, as you can see, all painted up. And I had to do quite a lot of masking, as you can see here. So for what I did for masking, I was using my Infinity Mat. And I found a 6mm bit of tam Tamiya tape. I basically cut two, two of these larger squares, shorter, narrower. And then that kind of fit real good. So I can just fit them between the thins, um, basically mask all the rest up. You can see the amount of masking on this one. I haven't masked it yet. Um, took a while, probably you know, a good 30, 45 minutes to mask each one. But it's worth it in the end because obviously you, know, you get a nice looking missile at the end. So yep, just want to come back and just share those colors with you. Okay guys, back and we're finally painted. Wow, what a chore. I'm taking a deep sigh because to get this amount of work from starting these weapons and pylons and stuff, being in this video to now, it's probably about 20 hours worth of manpower, so a lot of work. So if you're somebody like me who usually builds aircraft, and at the very end kind of do the missiles and stuff, and it's a little bit of a chore because you're kind of ready thinking about your next build and really excited about moving on, probably best to do these a little bit early in the build like I am. So my actual fuselage and actual jet itself is probably only about half built. So I thought I'd tackle these early. I'm glad I did before my kind of mojo went and while I'm really still enjoying this build. So a lot of work, a lot of decals, a lot of painting, a lot of masking, especially things like this guy kind of guy, painting all the semi-gloss black parts, and painting all the tail fins on the missiles. It's a lot. So we're there. So we painted everything. We're out. Um, we've got a quick clear coat LP9, which is gloss. Um, just kind of seal everything in and um, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, started post shading the fuel tanks. As I mentioned, I want to kind of weather these up a little bit. Let me, just, there you go. Sorry, it's got like sun shining right now. It's kind of blocking. You can see it's all grind up a little bit. And the other guy. So let me tell you, let me focus it better. There you go, and see it focused better. Um, so how do I do that? So what I used is, I love these, airbrush stencils. Ushi van der Rosten, but they're also sold by MIG. Exactly the same, said Ushi on them. The MIG ones are actually $5 cheaper, that's why I bought the MIG ones. And basically, it's like a little template like this. I think AK Interactive do a kind of vinyl one, which is probably better, because rather than photo etch, because you can kind of manipulate it around certain areas and stuff. Um, but this is a photo etch version. So what I basically do is I hold it up next, next to that. And my favorite kind of for tanks, my favorite kind of weathering dirty color is red brown XF64. And what I do is I just spray it through this pattern. When I pull it off, you get all this kind of random markings. Now, to well, main thing is when I say I spray it, I mean lightly, like it's light mist, like very bad, very barely touch the. Um, trigger on the airbrush just very light because you don't overdo this you want to keep it subtle right so very lightly um, some parts went a little bit too much um, but we'll talk about in a minute so I went have red, red brown with the um, stencil it's just for the fuel tanks and then to create that kind of bleach fading effect and also cover up some of the more darker red brown parts I went back XF19 which is like the um, sky gray from Tamiya and again very very lightly in the airbrush just a little tiny trigger pull very misting it on certain areas kind of covering you know slowly and barely any paint just misting over some of these patches and then some other patches just to lighten them up and to create this kind of effect post shading effect so on these drop tanks we're basically four stages of weathering so first stage was the primer where we did a shadow coat second stage is the post shading which i just showed you just now the third stage is going to be adding an oil wash Sorry, the first stage is going to be adding a, um, a clay wash for panel lines. And then the fourth 
will be the oils. So what I'm going to use is for all the pylons and the fuel tanks, I'm going to use the dark dirt flooring models. I always use any of my weathering videos. You'll see I always use this product. Um, it's getting a little expensive now and shipping from UK is pretty ridiculous. Um, even shipping from the, the distributor in Colorado, high altitude hobbies is about seven, eight dollars in shipping on one bottle. So it's getting a little bit high in price, um, to be honest with you, but this does last a long time. Um, but yeah, so I'm getting low, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to stock up. So dark dirt, what you're gonna do is you decant it into a like a plastic shot cup glass. I literally buy like a pack of like a hundred or something from Amazon for like four dollars. I use my mix my paint up, and then I'm just gonna take take this kind of part of them right here. What you're gonna do is literally just dip your paintbrush in and smear it on. Just want to focus on it because there's stuff behind it um, but anyway you just smear it on like that and that is it you just leave it for like half an hour just to dry now I have one I made earlier <laughs> which is I've lost where I put it now um, oh there it's hidden underneath so this is what it looks like when it's dry let me just you know let me move these out of the way because my camera is kind of focusing on stuff in the background Okay, so what we do is take a bit of paper towel and literally just wipe it off once it's dry. And using the key to this is click um, a gloss coat underneath it. Don't if you're a matte coat, it's really going to be hard to get off. Um, sand coat is going to leave some behind, but a gloss coat will just leave it just in the panel lines. And sorry about this. Looks like the camera's struggling to focus on it. So we've got light shining behind me and I've got so much going on. But anyway, so it's basically what it's going to show, just the panel lines. God, I wish you can see that. There we go, finally. See how it's just got the panel lines? Okay, I'm uh, built battle here. So that's basically how it is. Um, so we're going to head and just for example these drop tanks we can do it right now I'm just going to anywhere there's a panel line just going to smear it all on and it washes off with water so you know if you screw it up you got easy to get, get out of it and try again and just anywhere there's a panel line you don't want to put too much on because the more you put on the more you got to remove so I've learned in life with this stuff just to um Really, just put on what you need. There's a panel line the front here. Uh, there back. And I'm just looking around wherever there's a recess or a panel line, like these guys. Is it a pylon? Okay, so that's going to get the power line. So I'm basically just going to put this again to the side, just let it dry. Um, do the other one real quick. Again, just wherever there's a power line. it um, just do the pylon and that 
There's that one done too. So let's let those dry. And as before, we just take the paper towel and wipe those off. So I'm going to do that for all the pylons, for the actual missiles and pods. I'm probably not going to do I'm, for the pylons. I will for the missiles and pods. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm, what I'm going to do right now. I don't want to get, kind of wear them up too much because they're not kind of that weathered. So let me go ahead and work on the rest of these little pylons, and um, we'll come back and we'll continue with the rest of the weathering. Okay, so here you go, full lineup of ordnance, and it's kind of in the order it goes. So these are your wing tips, and then this is the center, and kind of working your way out. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, what in the end, what I use, you know, I use dark dirt for the pylons. I use black for the missiles and pods. So I did water it down about 50/50 with some just tap water, and then just um, applied it to the. The missiles and it just gives you a nice subtle kind of um, panel line wash to pick out you know, a little bit more detail so really happy how it's turning out again like for example this one here look at the pylon you can see all that details picked out with a panel line wash so we're good so these missiles all can get put to the side we don't need to worry about these right now these are done we'll put them in a box and they will be attached to the aircraft at the very end so move these off the camera so what we're going to do now is a fourth and final stage of weathering for the tanks. So what I've done is with the tanks, I've gone ahead and added a um, XF86 matte coat. So uh, with oils now, it's kind of the opposite. So so with, with the weathering wash, you want a gloss coat for the panel line so you can wash it off. With no oils, you want it to kind of grip, so you want a matte coat. So after you know this stuff's been wiped off and cleaned and everything i gave it like i said i gave a quick spray of matte clear coat let it dry and now we can go ahead and just add some subtle neat oil weathering so here's a quick crash course on neat weathering um neat oil weathering um done it many videos before so um should be nothing new but again so we're going to use 502 which is the best oils ab tylong and for the tanks we're going to use starship filth I normally use smoke to be honest, that's my go-to colour, but today we'll use Starship Filth. Just need a tiny little bit, as you can see. So this thing's going to last me you know, a lifetime. Using, you can use a bit of cardboard or paper towel to help leach some of the linseed oil out of the oil. And the other colour we're going to use is... Faded dark, ye dark Yellow, which is actually orange. Um, but this is good for hydraulic leaks and kind of like spills and stains and stuff. So we'll use this one. Tie a little bit of that one too. Oh, a little bit more, maybe. There we go. Now, my three brushes of choice. Very stiff brushes, um, like a soft fluff you want to. So these are just used purely just for oils. These three brushes. So this is how it works. So. And get a dark color right here. Get a little bit on my brush. And then I'm just gonna wipe wipe off the extra. And then I'm just, just basically just gonna fill up how lines. Okay, I'm gonna get my other brush and literally just blend it in. Now what I'm gonna should do actually, my bad, I'm just gonna put a glove on. Get fingerprints on the oil, so There, that's better. So I'm not gonna get my fingerprints all in this thing. So as you can see, it gives you just a subtle kind of weathering. Oh, use the wrong side of the brush. Okay, let's get some more. This time we do this side. 
It's just really just drawing it on, to be honest with you. Put that back here. lines, can I get my brush out, I should just try this brush, that's not quite hard enough, I like a little bit stiffer bristle, again you can see I'm blending it, Blending, blending, blending. Okay, then back to this guy. And if you find like there, you've probably got too much on, there's two things you can do. You can either just come in with a normal Q-tip and just kind of rub it off or you need a little bit more, you just go ahead and use a little bit of um, enamel thinners. Um, just be aware, a little bit goes a long way with enamel thinners. Just literally, literally a dot, just a tiny, tiny little drop is going to pretty much wipe everything off the model. So just be aware of that. So again, we want these nice and weathered up. So a little bit dirty, that is a little bit too much. So I'm just going to go ahead with my Q-tip, just, just wipe it off. It's actually just like a storm starting outside too, so if you can hear like the hail or something battering against the window, I apologize for the background noise. Okay, I'm in the back here. Just basically following all the pound lines. Which I don't think I put anything on the bottom. Nice and subtle. Hopefully you can kind of see that effect. Um, a little bit along this line too. So you can see, just super easy, just following the panel lines. And again, the key with this is less is more, so barely any oil. And just blend it in. Let's add a little bit more to the very front. Okay, just blend it in. And I'm pretty happy with that. So, okay, for a start, and then let's see what's going on here. So what we're gonna do now is we're coming now come and do the, the um, little bit of the orange here. Well, dark fade of yellow is actually a real color. Oh, get rid of some black off my brush. And I'm just literally just gonna add a little bit, almost like a like, like a little leak from the fuel tank. Again, we're just gonna. And again, just literally barely any.
blending again. And oh, a little bit in the bottom. It's this little kind of see right here. There's a, there's a few like little kind of guys in the bottom. And that is it. It's going to mellow out as it dries. Um, beware, these things can take four or five days to dry. I find my, I don't use a lot of oil. Typically, I find they dry within 24 hours or so. Um, but if you look at the difference here, hopefully you can, oh, hopefully you can see the difference between this is the one we're not touched and this is the one we've added some oils to. Just give us a little subtle kind of weathering again. I see the top, just, and then you can come in more colors and you know, do as many colors as you want, but just for a basic kind of crash course, that again see a difference hopefully is it so i mean i'll go work on the other tank to maybe do a little bit more on this one but that is it um don't add any kind of clear coats to that just we do i do the exact same thing with the actual aircraft itself once that goes on there's no more clear coats nothing that is the final finish i like the i like the look of the oils um i don't want to clear coat over it um so this has been a super long video hope you've stayed this long um but we've got a lot to get through obviously um quick update um I was about to end the video I, I i did end the video and i looked at it and um it's just a little bit light so i did come back as kind of expected um with my smoke um starship phelps okay it does an okay job but i love smoke i mean I tried to try some different, it didn't quite work for me. So I added a little bit of smoke, not all over the place, just a little um, to darken it up a little bit, like, you know, these areas, um, a few like little patches here and there um, underneath, just blended a few more colors. So here you go. This is basically the finished, um, highly weathered fuel tank. So I hope you agree that it looks really nice. I think neat oils really make a huge difference. So four stage weathering real quick again. We did the pre-shading, we did post-shading, we did the power line wash with clay and then we came in with the neat oils. And as you can see, that it's gonna obviously, as I mentioned, it's gonna you know, mellow out as it dries. But I really kind of like the effect of neat oils. All you do is add, so I came back and just added a couple of drops, you know, here and there of the smoke, dark color, you know, just random places and just again, just my brush just blended all in. So yeah, so we will be doing somewhat of this on the actual jet itself. It will be quite Obviously not to this degree of weathering, but it will be weathered up somewhat um, once we get to that stage. So that's the one, and this is the other one. So again, give you an idea of you know what I was looking for. I'm really happy how these turned out. Um, so yeah, so basically three colors at once more. Um, Starship Filth was the main color we used for the lines. A couple of drops like hydraulic kind of well fuel spills, I guess, using the, the red, um, not red, the faded dark yellow, and then we used smoke. Um, to come back in and add some um, you know, some streaking and some darker colors in, here and there. And that is it this time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I know it's a long video. I don't know how many of you stayed this far. Um, went for a lot of different things in this one. Um, but I hope to see you next week. So again, this is Richie from RW Hobbies. And until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.